Hello, listeners. I'm here to ask you for a favor. If you enjoy the work that Mark and I are doing with We Got This, I want you to go to your computer. I don't care if it's a Mac or a PC. It can be a Linux computer, maybe. We'll see if it can do what I'm about to ask you to do. Probably it can. I don't know. I never really got into Linux. The point is, I want you to open iTunes on your computer. And I want you to look up our podcast on iTunes. And I'd like you to rate and review us. Because that stuff is important. It helps us in our iTunes rankings. And it helps more people learn about the show. I know that's something that you can do. It may be something that you want to do that slipped your mind. But I know that now, thanks to me recording a message and putting it out on the podcast, that we'll have literally thousands of reviews pouring in. I can tell. I'm going to check right now. Let me look. Nope. Nothing yet. You know what? Maybe it takes a while to register. I'm willing to wait. That's how patient I am. Before this episode gets underway, I want to thank Mike Furman for our incredible theme song, Jonathan Dinerstein for the underscoring at the very top of the episode, and Ken Plume, who does all of our audio mastering. Also a reminder, if you're in the Chicago area, Mark and I will both be in Chicago with the Thrilling Adventure Hour as part of C2E2. We've got signings and panels. We're going to be performing an improv show Friday night and two different performances of Sparks Nevada Live, adaptations of the Sparks Nevada comic book. Adaptations of the Sparks Nevada comic book for you to enjoy. Tickets are still available, so go to thrillingadventurehour.com for more details. And now, episode 8 of We Got This. Namaste. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Grilling, charcoal, or gas? That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Welcome, people of Earth. Hello. Uh, this is Mark Gagliardi. And Hal Lublin. And you are with us right now. In Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Yes, we're we're on the Nightville tour. We're sharing a hotel room. Like we always do when we tour together. <laughs> and just when we go on vacation. Sure. And we decided, uh, I saw a subject that came in through Twitter from Ashley Schwan. Hi, Ashley. Name. And it was so good that we were talking about it. On the way up to the room. Yeah, we were like, we have to go record this right now because we need to stop talking about it. Yeah. Uh, you're going to hear cars going by. We're, our hotel yeah. room is like right by the busiest street in the world, I think. Yeah. Well, it is our nation's capital. So there are going to be very important people driving by, way more important than us, who are talking about way more important things than we are talking about. So we'll let it slide. That's impossible because today we're going to be talking about barbecuing. Yes. Uh, should you use charcoal briquettes or should you use a gas grill? I love this topic. Yeah. Uh, My brother is a barbecue chef up in Seattle, and um, I would have loved to have gotten his input on this, but uh, we wanted to record this so quickly that we did not have time to research anything or look anything up, so we're just going uh, on the fly on this one with no help from outside influences whatsoever. Yeah, and I want to toss out right now smokers. We're going to toss out the slow cooking barbecue. We're going to talk about like the backyard grill. Yes. Uh, So I guess we should really call it grilling and not barbecuing. Sure. Because barbecuing is implies that it is done very slowly over a long period of time. That's a process. That is a process. Okay. So let's do. Let's talk about grilling. Yeah, we'll talk about grilling. Let's do the one, two, three. Okay. One, two, two, three. three. Gas. Oh, okay, okay. great. <laughs> See, <laughs> we have I, done that in unison. <laughs> oh, right after. But uh, we've also flipped once. the other way. That, and that one, you should, it's rather than, oh, that one is, oh. <laughs> I would. It's like you flipped the music upside down, Victor Borga style. <laughs> <laughs> and then stared at the audience. Flip. How many people know who he is? Know who Victor Borga is? Yeah. Um, not uh, anybody that grew up watching that infomercial late at night. Do you remember that one? <laughs> I do. Um, 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, sing over you talking there a moment ago. I was just so excited about remembering that bit. Do you think uh, Do you think more people today know Victor Borga or Mark Russell, who did the political specials on PBS? Uh, I don't know Mark Russell. You don't? I don't. He always was on a round platform and and sat at the piano, and then he performed satirical songs about politics. Oh, topical. And, yes, and he <laughs> the, was he like, "Here's what Carter's doing wrong." Yes. Yeah. He probably not as sharp toothed as as many people would like, yeah. but. I remember Mark McKinney doing an impression of him on Saturday Night Live. This is in like 1997. The he season was, that McKinney was on Saturday yeah, Night Live. Yeah, and he's like uh, the, the Mark Russell bit was, "Could you imagine what if what if Al Gore became president?" And then his song was "President Gore," and then he just mugged at the camera, and it really <laughs> summed up what most people think of. Who know Mark Russell. That's what they think of. Uh, now, not knowing Mark Russell, now I know exactly what to think of him. <laughs> exactly. I'm uh, glad I've settled that for you. Let's talk barbecue. Yeah. I no, thought, let's not talk barbecue. Let's talk grilling. We're going to talk grilling. I would have uh, put you down as a charcoal man. You know, I am generally speaking a uh, a, a purist mm-hmm. uh, with food. Um, it's the same reason that I don't like to put ketchup on a hot dog. Sure. Of course. Um, why we keep coming back to that? I'm going to stop. Um, well, it's important that we keep hammering home all the decisions <laughs> we've already made. Yes, underhand people, right? Yeah. No, overhand. No, underhand people. You should be overhand. Oh, there you go. Um, so I, uh, I tend to, I, I enjoy food that's cooked over a charcoal grill. Here's my argument in favor of gas. Okay. Um, the you may not get that same flavor that you would get from a charcoal grill on whatever meat it is you're cooking or vegetable. Mm -hmm. And there is something to be said for that flavor. But I think the ability to control the temperature for anybody that's cooking is far more important. Yes. This is, this is uh, what I find like, and I like charcoal grilling. I prefer Mm -hmm. it. I I lived in a place for 10 years where we, if we had a grill, it had to be charcoal. So I had a charcoal grill. Really? Yeah. That That seems odd because a charcoal grill, I had a charcoal grill at an old apartment of mine and I would grill on the balcony, and one day I looked up, and there was a giant black smoke trail. Like it looked like my apartment had been burned down. Uh, and I, I, you would think that they'd be like, "No, no, no, no charcoal, just gas," because that doesn't leave that smolder. No. Well, I was on the top floor oh, of okay. a two-floor <laughs> courtyard building. Oh, the I don't top want it to floor. make it sound like I'm the Jeffersons <laughs> living in the penthouse apartment <laughs> on the east side. Uh, do beans burn on the grill? Uh, no. On a charcoal grill? No, they don't. But on a gas grill? On the gas grill, they could burn, <laughs> which is another thing for charcoal. But here's the thing. Like, charcoal, you get the briquettes, mm-hmm. and then it, it shows you, like, how you build this pyramid mm-hmm. of briquettes, and then you light them, and hopefully you don't need any lighter fluid. A lot of them are, like, easy light briquettes. And I always found that I would I would light it exactly where they said, and, like, it would – the there would be a flame on the briquette for two seconds, and then it would be over. So yeah. I would go through, like, not a book, like a library of matches trying to get this <laughs> thing to light up. And I got lighter fluid. I was squirting it on there. And no matter what I did, it was almost impossible to get them to burn. And people, I had the vent open underneath. I know that that's required for the fire to burn. I'm not a moron. Were you, was this when you were living in that underwater apartment? Yeah. Oh, see, that may have been your problem. No, no. Everything was waterproof. So, (laughs) yeah, but like it would, I could not get, could not get it to burn properly. I never had a big problem getting a charcoal grill to burn. I found it was a pain in the neck to get it to get going Um, because there's so much, De- yeah, like the whole pyramid thing, and you have to wait till this layer of them is white, mm-hmm. and then you've still got like bl- the black ones underneath, and that means it's ready to go. And you, ho- if you can hold your hand over it for three seconds, then, and you have to pull it away after three, that means it's hot enough. I, I prefer a grill, a gas grill, where I can set the dial to a number between one and ten, yeah. push a little red ignition button, and uh, and then wait ten minutes. And that's all I have to do. Here's something against the gas grill, though. Have you ever found um, you're pressing the button and and the whole time you just hear that shh of gas escaping the grill and it's not oh, yeah. igniting? And and all and I then it, think all, of, everything smells like a fart. Uh, well, I think <laughs> everything smells like a fart. And then I'm afraid it's going to be like better off dead and there's going to be a huge fireball. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, Ricky, Ricky, 
Wait a minute. You're she worried about a fire. Face. You're worried about a fireball. You're the guy that just said you will squirt a bottle of lighter fluid onto the charcoal brick head. That's controlled. I'm not releasing uh, like propane into the air. We are doing it indoors. Are you? Are you grilling indoors? I do it in a coal mine. Is that wrong? Because the briquettes are a lot easier to get there. You just harvest them off the walls. You guys for dinner tonight. Hal and I are going to have grilled canary. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Don't call it barbecued, though, because we're going to cook that guy fast. Yeah, and there are a ton of dead ones in my kitchen. <laughs> that should be a warning, Hal. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, a warning that they're going to taste great when we cook them. Oh, jeez. Not <laughs> my the older brain ones. is ill. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> listeners, Hal just fell over. Uh, uh. Hold on. We'll be right back. Noise. That was a terrible noise. Yeah. I go over here. Commercial break. <laughs> Hi, this is Kingsford. <laughs> Our charcoal baguettes come from the wall of Hal's home, just like the Lord intended. We'll see how they rule on this story and then decide whether or not we still sponsor them after today. <laughs> or have them murdered. Can Kingsford do that? Yeah, they're big charcoal. Oh, gosh. You don't, you do not want to get on the bad side of big charcoal. That's right. Um, here, here's a question. Have you ever been to like a park where you use their grills which is basically like an aluminum box yes that looks like that looks like it was salvaged from the titanic it's yes. covered in rust yeah they're they're always really really nasty like like you should expect to see fish swimming around them in a reef yeah i feel like it's quicker rather than eating the food off of it to just like swallow a vial of tetanus <laughs> i was in uh i was in uh, griffith park in los uh-huh. angeles and they have those there in the old zoo section, which is my favorite section of Griffith Park. It yeah. used to be the L.A. Zoo. Now it's there's no more animals in it, but all the structures are still there. Yes. And the areas where the bears and the lions lived are now, um, are now, you know, little picnic areas. And they have these grills. And I went out there and I, I realized that this charcoal was not going to ignite. I was doing everything I could to get this charcoal to light, and it just was not working. Right. So what we as geniuses decided to do was we would put all of our hot dogs, because that's really all you can do on those. You don't want to – you're not going to cook a a prime rib or a filet (laughs) mignon. You're going to cook a hot dog. It's something you just have to heat up. Yeah. Yeah. You don't really have to – you don't want to worry about making sure that you're cooking the salmonella out of your chicken. Um, <laughs> because you're cooking something else terrible into it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. If I'm going to have carcinogens in my food, it's going to be because my chicken smoked cigarettes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, and we thought, okay, here's what we're going to do because we cannot get this charcoal to light. We did bring as part of our picnic preparations an entire roll of paper towels. So our idea was. Stuff the paper towels into the charcoal hold of this grill, light the paper towels up. Once we've already put the hot dogs on top, light the paper towels Uh so that a flame would form. And then never letting the flame drop, we would just continually feed paper towels into this thing like we were stoking the fires of uh, an old locomotive and uh well it sounds like a really a really great plan it was we we managed to completely burn six hot dogs yeah. on the outside and uh use an entire roll of paper towels <laughs> uh just burned up like the single most wasteful way of cooking that you could possibly use let me ask you this yeah. since i mentioned the hot dogs do you like how do you like a hot dog on a grill I, I like it with a, uh, a few grill marks. I don't like the char. We, we talked about this a little bit in the, in the hot dog episode. Did we? You love like the hot dog skin. I don't like char on anything. Like I yeah. like it cooked, like not medium rare, but, but just medium. Rare. medium. Just medium. Like a hot steak, dog though? Well, hot dogs are cooked already. You yeah. Could, you could eat a hot dog out of the package. Yeah. A medium, a medium hot dog I mean, is like just a hamburgers. cold hot like, dog. I don't like hamburgers burnt up either. A lot of people. No, I don't either. And, and that's the other thing with, uh, with with a charcoal with a charcoal grill and a gas grill too is you can burn a burger. I'll I'll tell you the best hamburger that I've ever had. Okay. It was this past fourth of July mm-hmm. and Jennifer and I were staying uh, in the neighborhood where we live, there are firework shows and stuff and plenty to do. And they wind up closing the the streets off because people try to park to get a view of the fireworks. So mm-hmm. we were like, we're not going to leave our neighborhood. We'll just walk around. We we had already bought food. And we have a community grill that is a gas grill. So we were going to cook out there, but 
a million other people in our in our company. Yeah, you were the, the only idea. guys to have the idea yeah, of we're... grilling on the Fourth of July <laughs> when you lived down by the marina. Yeah, I you're, thought it you're, was the perfect plan. Your home looks like a beer ad on the Fourth of July. <laughs> Sailboats true. in the background, a grill there. How can you expect people to be like, you know what? Let's just stay inside. A course train pulled out of nowhere and, and mowed froze the everything. Cars. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think those are run by Victor Von Fries, by the way? Uh, I would imagine so. Sure. So the point is... And stoked by paper towels. Yes. We were like, we, we're going to cook this stuff anyway. So I, I started looking up how to pan fry a hamburger. And I found like a very simple recipe. It was like a tablespoon of oil and you put it on medium-low heat. You do the burger five minutes each side and it was perfectly cooked. In really? that it was perfectly cooked on the outside, cooked all the way through evenly. It was nice and juicy. I put the cheese Pink on, in the covered it. Uh, no, you know, actually, it was it was cooked all the way through, but but it wasn't tough and dried out because okay. that's the that's the risk you run. Is the more well done it is, the more dried out it gets. Right. Now, do you think this was luck, or do you think this was? Using this recipe that you had, do you think you were able to control the temperature of the grill enough to handle it? That that's what it was. I I thought that too. I thought this there's no way there's no way I've stumbled upon the this this recipe and it's perfect for me. Mm-hmm. But I've done it a few times since, and it's worked every time. Every time it works like a charm. Are you a meat thermometer guy? Uh, I am if I'm cooking chicken on a grill. If I'm cooking it. Um, in an oven or something, I generally know the temperature to set and how long to put it out. Right. But that's the other thing is like you can cook chicken on a on a charcoal grill, especially because they tend not to have multi level uh, like you do on a gas grill. Like you set it and then you have the top shelf, which is for the sure for the buns and stuff and buns and and what have you. Is I've never had a had very good luck with chicken on a grill, and that's partially because even if you even if you marinate it in like olive oil beforehand, it's going to stick to the to either type of grill. Yeah, um, but gas grill. Do you I've spray? Because I spray the grill before I put uh-huh. a piece like, of chicken down, which is great to get that. You get that big like fireball. Yes, uh, which I love. I'm a big fan of cooking with fire, and why? Like I, I'm a, I'm a unapologetic pyro uh, <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. I love watching a. I mean, come on! I cooked hot dogs over an open paper towel flame. Um, I like a fireball, uh, and I don't know. Cooking chicken for me, get a meat thermometer is my thing. I'm like, I didn't use one for a long time. And now I'm a, I'm a disciple of the meat thermometer because I would always, if I was cooking chicken on a grill, I was always terrified that I was going to undercook it. Right. So what I would wind up doing is just burning the heck out of it. And I'm like, well, it's cooked all the way through. Yeah, it's cooked all the way through, but it's chicken jerky at this point with a black hot dog exterior. It's sort of like if wood paneling was made out of chicken. Yeah, that's what I would do. So now it's just, you know, you jab the uh, jab the therm- instant read thermometer in, costs you five bucks at any store and, you know, it makes it super easy. This yep. has become a cooking show. It has. It has. When definitely. did this happen? Uh, well, we started talking about grilling. Here's, here's something else in favor of charcoal. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a difference in the flavor. There is, and you can you can do things like put mesquite chips in. A lot of the things that you might do with a with a slow cooker, mm-hmm. um, or uh, um, um, I can't think of the word. The barrel, like where you take a barrel oil. smoker. Yeah, yeah, like a barrel smoker, smoker exactly. Uh, a lot of the things you can do there. You can do to, to a limited degree with a charcoal grill. You don't think you can with a gas grill? I don't. I, I haven't seen it. There may be people who do, but but for me, like I don't want to. First of all, we've already got propane and, and an open flame going. And if I throw, if you throw something down there, so here's another thing that happens with a with a with a gas grill. It doesn't happen with a charcoal. Is that the gas grill as the different food like drips down onto onto where the flames come out? Mm-hmm. Eventually, just every time you cook, it smells like burnt food, and then you don't get that. Like part of the sensation of, of grilling that's a lot of fun is smelling the food cooking. Like, oh, it smells so good. I it's do think to, that to be ready. That's what makes it tough. I mean, we both said gas at the beginning, but I think that does make it tough. There is that smell that comes with charcoal grilling. That's sort of a halfway point between gas grilling and 
open campfire grilling. Right. There is that sort of semi campfire. I am outdoors. It's summertime. Give me a cold beer and some fireworks and that core silver bullet train down at the marina while Hal watches fireworks. That's creating a huge problem because now the water's freezing over and animals are dying. Sure. That, oh, that train is not environmentally helpful in any way. In fact, not a lot of people know this, but the train in the movie Snowpiercer started out as a course train. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the world froze over. Oh, Sorry, wow. everybody. Yeah. You know what? Let's make our way from the back of that train where the charcoal grills are yeah, and up the to the front jello. where they have the gas. <laughs> I feel like I would have died on that train in 10 seconds. <laughs> Spoiler alert. They serve these protein blocks, these protein like gels to people that look like the energy blocks that runners eat. <laughs> <laughs> and they're totally made of crickets. I've had a cricket taco here in Washington D.C. You were talking about that, and then I you mentioned it on the picture on yeah. the on the Strider. Is that what we're on? The the yeah the the Strider is our tour van. Yeah, is the big tour van. Mm-hmm. But you showed a picture of it, and it was like it looked like somebody took a small round tortilla, crushed up some <laughs> crickets, and then poured like a green guacamole sauce on it. That's uh, pretty much what it is. That's terrifying. It was delicious. <laughs> was it? It was. the. I remember your review being something Well, no, like, my, the crickets were delicious. The crickets were good. It was the sauce that they put on it. It was this sort of red. It was, it was a little too salty. Yeah, that the was the problem. The sauce was a little too salty. The crickets were delicious. Moments ago, I said it was delicious just to be contrary to you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, I've, I've got a jar of dried out crickets for you right now. For you oh, to eat. oh, Hal has pulled out a <laughs> jar of dried crickets. It's giant. If you can guess how many there are. What is the what is the strangest thing that you've ever put on a grill? Did you do like the G.I. Joe when you were a kid? No, oh, and cook Cobra? Did you cook Cobra? No, I would never I would never do that with the action figures I had because I wanted to play with them again. Oh. And I knew like You I understood the concept of object permanence? Yes. But I had stuff break like I had a Millennium Falcon, and the, that Kenner Millennium Falcon mm-hmm. was not inexpensive. Like, I mean, it's worth a ton now if you have one in mint condition, but even back then, it was expensive. And I got one for, like, Hanukkah or something, and a, a friend down the block, the same friend that I punched in the back after dropping out of a tree, was like, <laughs> he was like, yo, can I see your Millennium Falcon? Because we all had horrendous Philadelphia You accents. are so Philadelphian. <laughs> and, I'm sorry. Philadelphian, Philadelphian, and he he broke he broke the ramp on the Millennium Falcon. Oh no! How are and Han and Luke going to get back inside now? Exactly, they were immediately discovered. Yeah, all the Minox came in and chewed on the power cables on the inside, and then they were nerd. swallowed by that giant worm. Spoiler alert! <laughs> if I spoil, spoiler alert! If you haven't seen Star Wars, well, look, this is the, who knows what the statute of limitations. Do you think more people have seen Star Wars or Snowpiercer? Man, I don't know the box office numbers off the top of my head. That's fair. Um, so you never put toys on the grill? No, no, yeah. I never did. But if I did, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been a gas grill. I would do it on a charcoal grill because you can clean them out easier. Yeah. But let's let's talk about the pros of a gas grill, which is even cooking. Yes, and that for me, I feel like is the trump card. Right. Even cooking is and and the ability to. To regulate your cooking surface is is a big, big part of it. Also, uh, gas grills generally, I think, have more space. And they have those second layers yes. and multiple burners. You can have one section that's on low and one section that's high for searing. Yeah. And you don't you don't have that control with a charcoal grill, although it seems to work out that way. Like, if you look at it like a Simon, those handheld Simon games where there are uh-huh. four quadrants... Each each is a different color button. Spoiler alert if you haven't played Simon yet. Do you think more people have played Simon or seen Snowpiercer? Uh, more people have seen Snowpiercer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Simon had really bad box office numbers. Oh, geez. Um, oh, wait. Are we talking about that movie, Simon, about uh, the Hasbro yeah. movie well, no, that they was, made right after Battleship? It was actually an adaptation of Simon and Simon, and they could only get one of the actors. Oh, yeah. That's sad when that happens. <laughs> so so with the charcoal grill. Oh, McCraney. <laughs> he won't do it. He's not going to give himself up for just any project. No, Major Dad does not just do any gig. That's right. That's why he held out and he got House of Cards. Lesson to all of you aspiring actors out there. I um I once got the opportunity to work uh, with his wife, and he came to the set, mm-hmm. and he was wearing a uh, a baby blue checkered seersucker suit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, Major Dad is standing next to me, and he looks like 
Clarence Darrow from Inherit the Wind. Like, <laughs> he looks like the most Southern lawyer right now. I kind of wanted to just hand him a fan and a mint julep. <laughs> I didn't check his shoes, but I'm fairly certain they were either white or cream-colored leather. Of course. <laughs> he, he raided Boss Hogg's <laughs> costume. I assume that's how everybody from Hazard County, Georgia... Here's a little dumb trivia question for you, Please. since we're talking about grilling. Yes. Do you know what Boss Hogg's real name is? Please tell me. I only remember this because I had the album when I was a kid. I had the Dukes of Hazard album. And With all uh, the special trivia. And well, at one point during Boss Hogg's song, because uh-huh. if you're making a whole album, it can't just be Waylon Jennings the whole time doing the opening theme. Of course. Uh, Boss Hogg uh, comes on and he says, Howdy, folks. This is Boss Hogg. That's J.D. Hogg. That's Jefferson Davis Hogg. Oh, my goodness. So Boss Hogg is named after the, the president of the Confederate States of America. The first and only. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And that has a lot to do with grilling. You know? But this is all to say that in a charcoal grill, you have those quadrants. <laughs> and there's always one of them that gets zero heat. Yeah. And then two of them that are way too hot. And one of them is sort of okay. And you and you're Wait, rarely, you divide it into quadrants on a charcoal grill? I'm just saying, like, if if we're going to generally divide it. Like, you theoretically the could? Theoretically, theoretically, that's how the heat kind of distributes. That's that's how I found, okay. found it to be. Even even though you build that pyramid really? and you try to light it all around. Yeah. Well, there's wind, and if you've got wind primarily coming from one side, it's going to... Sure. Yeah. There are a lot of things that can throw it off. But the problem is, you're often not just grilling for one person or two people. You're grilling for a few. Or even if it is for two people, you'll probably make a... A good amount of food, and you mm-hmm. can't control if it's all, even if it's like two hamburgers, a turkey burger, and a hot dog. There's no way to plan it so that everything's done at the same time, right? And you you should be able to do that in a gas grill. You can, and it, part of it is when you put the food on, but also with a gas grill, you can put it all on at once. You can put them in, on the different levels, mm-hmm. the different layers, and then everything cooks really, really well. Yeah, and I also don't like having a bag of charcoal lying around. Why? I don't know. It just seems dirty and like a pain to me. Okay. Like it's way easier to just have your tank attached to the propane grill. Mm-hmm. And then when that empties out, you run to the, you know, the grocery store, the gas station and trade it out for a new one. Plug it in. Don't think about it. Sure. Like it always bothered me. Any apartment I lived in where I had a, a charcoal grill that I had to have like this bag of dirty flammable charcoal underneath my sink in the kitchen. <laughs> hey, uh, Mark, where's that bag of fire rocks you keep in your house? <laughs> oh, it's right over here by this uh, by this flint. Oh, fine. Hold on. Oh, I just tripped. Here goes my key. Flyer. <laughs> Flyer is... Uh, <laughs> is the onomatopoeia of yeah. a key hitting flint exactly. and starting a charcoal briquette fire? Yeah, it's also the marriage between fire and flame. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I agree. And also... Wait a minute. What? Were you trying to say fire and also flame at the same time and that's just what came out? I was trying to say fire and I have a problem with my mouth. Like I said before, my brain is ill. Or you've been watching Philadelphia hockey. Yes, I have. I've been watching the... Phil- just I'm just thinking of one of them right now, which is why I said flyer. Sure. Uh, or you're super into brochures. <laughs> Uh, my wife is into brochures. Really? We will go somewhere, and if they have brochures, Jennifer loves to grab all of them. Like that wooden thing that's got all the... Yeah. Here's She'll, here's where... Go to Ripley's and the Guinness Museum. Or if there's just a table out somewhere, like, it, it's not even at a hotel. If there are places where people have flyers or information, she, she brings them in. And for a while, I was like, boy, we have all these flyers. This is kind of a waste. They're piling <laughs> up. And she's like... she. Gave me the argument for having them, which actually makes a lot of sense, which is she's interested in learning stuff. Mm-hmm. So that those are all different sources of information. So she looks at them and decides whether she's interested or not. And that, that determines whether or not it's kept. So we don't okay. – our house is not like hoarders with piles sure. of flyers. She does everywhere. know there's an internet, right? Uh, she's not aware. Let's not tell her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You don't want her searching your browser history. Yeah, of course. She'll find all of the research I do for this podcast and be like, yeah. why are you looking at all these pictures of toilet paper? <laughs> are you are you some weird Japanese businessman who who hires people to unroll toilet paper for him? And your answer would be? Yes. And okay. it makes good money. Okay. Just checking. I'm a, I'm a Japanese neat boy. <laughs> oh, I fold geez. paper towel and toilet paper. 
Well, yeah. here's the other good thing about having all those brochures. If it was at your houses, you mm-hmm. could start a barbecue with them. That's true. And I would just feed towels. it in. I would just stoke that fire and we could make hot dogs. <laughs> Uh, if you don't have paper towels, do you then use coffee filters to make the fire? <laughs> no, weirdly, I use toilet paper. That's where all my toilet paper is going. Oh, the mystery is solved. Uh, so when you go camping, yes. have you been camping? I love camping. I have not ever been camping. That does not surprise me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want, even when I was a kid. You I have every gadget for travel possible. <laughs> Hal has like a special travel wallet and a special shirt holder in his special fancy travel bag. Uh huh. And uh, and that's not the that's not the mark of a guy who likes to go camping. That's the mark of a guy who's like, I'm going to be as comfortable as possible yeah. in the camping that is staying at a Marriott. Exactly. I'd be glamping. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to do a thing. glamping, yeah, you've seen that, right? Where no. it's like a luxury camping experience. No, like they've got a a, a beautiful tent with a queen size bed, and there's some maybe what? electricity there. That's Basically, they've, ta- they've taken a hotel room and just surrounded it in canvas. Yeah, that's that's a terrible idea. But anyway, when you when you go camping, mm-hmm. have you ever brought a little portable grill with you? Yes. And what what kind of grill was it? Uh, it was a small portable gas grill that used a propane uh, little those little green Coleman yeah. propane canisters. Absolutely, um, and I love that. I prefer at a campsite cooking over the fire because most of the campsites that I've stayed at have a grill grate that will lower down over the entire fire pit, okay. which I love. Um, and that again. That's where I get, you know, that's where I get torn on this one because mm-hmm. I love the experience and the flavor that comes from that. I love the ease of that little uh of that little propane grill. So yeah. what winds up happening when we go camping is the first night will be, oh, we're going to cook everything on the fire and then by night 2 it's like, no, just get the little propane grill because that's <laughs> way easier. <laughs> uh, my favorite barbecue place in the world is is the Salt Lake in Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. just outside. It's just south of all oh, your favorite barbecue places in Austin. <laughs> sure, way well, to uh, one, there way is, to be controversial. There is one in Round Rock. Even in Austin, that's not everybody's favorite barbecue place. Yeah, right. But the the point is, my favorite barbecue place is the Boar's Nest in yeah. Seattle. Of course, the Bo- oh yeah, uh, Mark's Mark's brother Gabe. Yes, brought us, proprietor of the Boar's Nest. Proprietor of the Boar's Nest, and they have great barbecue sauces. And I'm not kidding. I've tried. Like four or five of them, and they're all so good. Yeah, not to buzz market, but he does <laughs> this sell. Is, this is just telling you this the is truth. straight up marketing. When we were in Seattle this time last year for yeah. Emerald City Comic Con, that's going on right now, right? It is going on. It's this weekend. Uh, hello, Emerald City Comic Con. Hi, ECCC. He brought us like this huge, like barbecue dinner just for everybody. Like here's a bunch for, like, of like twenty five people, yeah. and it was delicious. Um, so you should check out Boar's Nest Barbecue uh, if you are in Seattle. And, and fried I, mac and cheese balls. Fried mac and cheese balls. They were so good. But going back to yes. uh, Salt Lake, one of the best experiences of walking into Salt Lake is you have that big circular grill mm-hmm. when you come in. And the meats that they've that they've probably smoked and been cooking for hours are there staying warm. It's like a big charcoal grill. And you see them sort of tending to this food. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it looks the way grilling should look. That's what I like when I think but is of grilling, that that's barbecuing. What I go to. Is that grilling or is that bar- are they cooking burgers and steaks on there? Or are they cooking big slabs of pork and yeah, it's beef? Like, it's like over long, and, long hours. Well, they put them in smokers to cook them, and then that's mm-hmm. where they're keeping them warm. I think I got and keeping them moist and brushing yeah. them over and stuff. Nobody uh, likes that word. Don't use that word. <laughs> that's true. There's no better word. What were you going to say? That that's some really good wet brisket. Yeah. Please let's not. Yeah. Wet brisket. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. <laughs> Wet brisket. One, two, three, four. What you Flyer. <laughs> flyer. <laughs> we're going to light this town on flyer. Hold on. Sorry, we're going to back up. <laughs> I said flyer. Sorry, I was thinking about Philadelphia hockey. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of one of their guys. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> we've gone over the gas grill. And the charcoal grill. Yes. And I think what it boils down to is the ease and usability uh, of a gas grill mm-hmm. and what you can accomplish. It's it's a far superior technological advance. Um, it's that versus that sort of it factor that a charcoal grill has. Sure. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like what is more important? So what do you think? 
I think I still have to maintain my original choice. I'm going to stick with uh, I'm going to stick with gas. I'm going to stick with gas as well. And let me just say to everybody out there, this is just the natural evolution of grilling. We started as cavemen Mm -hmm. and women Mm -hmm. with a big fire and cooking whatever mastodon we'd killed that day. On a, probably on a stick, turning an entire mastodon over and over. Ooh, over that's flame. a very, uh, very big stick. Then we figured out how to make these charcoal briquettes, and we started grilling that way. And then we figured out the gas grill. Now the electric grill also exists, and I had one, and it was terrible. The George it was constantly Foreman constantly sparking and catching fire. Which no, no, that's that's like an indoor grill. This was an outdoor grill that you actually plugged in. It was electric. It outdoor? was electric. Yeah, and it was not flame. It was just electric, so there were heating coils. But oh, okay. what would happen is you would put a burger on it, and the juices would drop down, and then flame would shoot out. So I got rid of it. <laughs> but the, the gas grill has become sort of a standard in cooking. Mm-hmm. And there, there's there's nothing wrong with charcoal grilling. But no. don't don't be one of those people who refuses to grill on a gas grill because it, it has become a superior way of, of managing your grill – and creating evenly cooked food for a large group of people at once. All right. I think uh, I think we've settled this one. We have. And you charcoal lovers out there are going to be real mad about it. Probably. So let us know on Twitter. Please send us hot dogs. Yeah. Send us some hot dogs. Yeah. And we'll steaks and anything that you cook on that charcoal grill. We will still eat them. We love them. <laughs> no, we're not. Don't, don't send us food. Please send us we're food. We're not going to eat it. Please send us food. No. How? Please send Mark food. Thank you. He's starving. Um, So thank you guys for listening to this episode. And please keep the topics coming. We're loving this. Yeah. Uh, And uh, you can reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets. Or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash We Got This Podcast. Or you can uh, email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com. Absolutely. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. And don't worry, everyone. We got this. We got this.